Hi friends and welcome to our Simply Clean, a more natural way of cleaning. Um, tonight we are going to be talking, our Simply Clean class, I'm getting my, my words tongue tied, our Simply Clean class that we are going to share with you tons of DIY recipes, but also if you are not a DIYer, which I am turning into not being one because I am so busy. Um, but I still like to make these, you know, cute little tutorial videos and to share with y'all because there are some things that I just absolutely love, like my um, stain remover that I did a video for yesterday. So if you didn't see that video, go check that out. Make that stain remover. You will love it. And it's so simple and it's affordable and it will like take all the stains out of almost every single thing. I haven't found a stain that it doesn't remove stains from. Um, anyway, tonight's class, we are going to be sharing with you lots of different DIY recipes, but also DIY buying. <laughs> so do it yourself buying. If you want to buy your products instead of making them, I totally get that. Um, and we're going to be sharing lots of alternatives and also sharing with you some dirty facts about why you should clean more green. First of all, let's talk about a little bit about uh, green washing. Some of the products that you might see at your local supermarket or um, your, your local pharmacy or whatever, they might say made with all natural ingredients. That is called green washing. It is basically a marketing gimmick to make you believe that the products that you are buying are a safe alternative. I would recommend going to the ewg.org, E, the letter E, W, G, dot org database and type in your cleaning product that you're thinking about buying and look at the rating. I will promise you that almost every single one of those green wash cleaners have a rating of like six points or more on the toxic scale. You wanna stay pretty much three and under. If you get a zero on the toxic scale, grab that product, it is probably pretty good for you, okay? But we're gonna share with you some cleaning products that we like to use in our homes. I have, let's see, um, six other girls on this call with me and we all have ditched and switched our toxic cleaning products for more natural ones. And we're gonna share that with you tonight. All right, I have a PowerPoint for you. I always have to remind myself how to share these. Okay, here we go. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. All right, so first of all, why clean green? Remember, air quotes, green. Um, the Toxic Substance Control Act in 1976 grandfathered in, listen to this, 65,000 to 100,000 different chemicals that are currently on our market today. This is in America. Now, a lot of these chemicals are banned in other countries because they are not safe. A lot of the chemicals that we use in America are banned in, let's say, Europe because they are not safe. Um, Roundup, for instance, that we spray all over our pet, um, plants, all over our weeds, all over our, you know, everywhere where we're, the food that we're eating, that is banned in almost every single other country, okay? So why did they grandfather these in? Well, they were trying to get, you know, they were trying to boost um, the market. They were trying to have, you know, a big boom and expansion in our market. And so they just grandfathered in all of these, um, these chemicals. And we don't know the effects uh, those chemicals have on us long term. And I'm just going to say, we have the highest rate of cancer that we've ever had in our history. We have the highest rate of neurological disorders. We have the highest rate of ADHD. We have the highest rate of anxiety. And a lot of the times people don't focus on the cleaners and the products that they're using in their home. And maybe there's a side effect that we have seen long term. And now we're, you know, seeing all these side effects happen into our bodies. Under the Toxic Substance Control Act, manufacturers are protected 
by trade secret laws that allow them to keep their ingredients listed as secret. Now, if you see, if you turn your bottle around and it says fragrance underneath those ingredients, a whole bunch of different chemicals can be lumped underneath that top, that basic you know, like umbrella word of fragrance. So if it has that word fragrance in it, I wouldn't even buy it. it, it I'll, if, if, if a product has fragrance in it, I want it to literally list out tea tree oil, lemon oil, things that are natural fragrances. Look for the natural fragrances listed out and not just that blanket umbrella of um, the word with the word fragrance. Okay, some other things, why you need to clean with green. So fumes from some of your cleaning products, which if you've been around in this century, um, you have experienced fumes from different products. I know bleach for me is something that I experienced that would burn my nostrils. And then I would go outside and breathe in fresh air. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize what I had exposed myself to. Um, other things, common cleaning ingredients can be laced with carcinogenic um, ingredients. So carcinogenic means that it is cancerous. It leads to cancer. Um, another thing, children born to women who held cleaning jobs while they were pregnant had higher risk levels of birth defects. That is crazy to me. And, and we, we never even link these things to the products that we're using. Some cleaners can cause chemical burns. I know that um, my mom used to clean with uh, ammonia and you know ammonia and you can't mix it with any other ingredient. And I remember her passed out on the floor when I was a child because she had cleaned with that harsh, harsh chemical. And that was just one imprint um, that I have one memory of just a toxic substance that we use in our home. And we bring this in without even questioning them. Okay, so like I said, if you want to check all of your cleaners, check it against the Environmental Working Group website, the ewg.org website. Now, now that I've got your attention, and you're probably running over to your cabinet. Well, you might eventually turning your bottles around and looking at the ingredients or comparing them to the website. I'm going to give you some safer alternatives. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some cleaning tips. Kathy, you would you like to share about these cleaning tips? Yeah, I would love to. Thanks, Lisa. Um, that's really good. And, and talking about your cleaners, just with the FDA does not regulate those, so they can put anything on the label. And by law, they're allowed to, to do that. And so, like Lisa said, it'll be really great at some point to go check your cabinets and just take two or three different things because the reality of it is, is a lot of our toxins that we're around are in our laundry room and our cleaners. And so, and, and Lisa's put together some really great um, recipes that we all use that, like she said, she's going to be able to give you some really great solutions. So you don't have to expose yourself, but more importantly, your kids. So, but just like with anything else, when you're using um, any type of cleaner, you want to shake it really well. Um, and you want to test the cleaners in a small area of your home or wherever that you are um, cleaning it at. Also, spray nozzles fit perfectly. Vinegar is a really great natural alternative. Um, it cleans a lot, guys. So I use it in a lot. I use it in my laundry too. Um, and it just has a fresh enough uh, smell. So those vinegar bottles are double use because you can put essential oils and cleaners in there and put a spray nozzle on there and it's dual purpose. So that's really a great way to stay budget friendly. Also storing your products in an airtight glass or high quality, there's different grades of plastic or even a stainless steel container um, would work really well. Then um, also just make sure you keep everything from your eyes. Um, obviously you don't want um, close to your eyes. And if you don't have a glass spray bottle and you don't have the vinegar bottles, you can always find them or uh, other containers that we just talked about. You can find that on Amazon. Um, there's also a website um, called Life Science Publishers that offers the spray bottles. 
um, or, you know, any kind of specialty bottle. And also sometimes y'all, I have been into Target and right there, you know, where they have the value section as you walk into a Target right at the right. Um, I have found adorable spray glass spray bottles right there. So sometimes you can find those little finds for just a dollar or two in Target as well. Thank you, Kathy. Awesome. Those were some great tips. Um, and then once you get started with oils, or even if you just want to learn some more information, hop on over to the Savvy Oiler Club Facebook group. We have tons of information, tons of tips in there. We share tips in there every single day. So you will not be alone as you get started. All right. Our favorite cleaner, our favorite cleaner, hands down, this is the only cleaner that I buy other than I would say Castile soap, peroxide, baking soda, um, and vinegar. This is the only one that is in a concentrate that I buy. You can check all of my cabinets. I am sold. I love the Thieves Cleaner. It is amazing. Okay, so you can take just a cap full and put it in an eight ounce um, or eight to 16 ounce spray bottle and use it for different things. So for general cleaning, dilute one cap full to three cups of water. For medium messes, like um, let's just say, um, I can think of my stove top right now when we splatter things outside of the stove top. You could probably, if you need a little bit more of a, a degreaser, you can just um, add a little bit more of your cleaner. And then if you're doing like really heavy messes of like your shower, um, or your, you know, your toilet, you can add a lot more cleaner in there. Okay. All right. So we're going to give you a couple of recipes uh, that we enjoy. So glass cleaner, vinegar, you know, is great for cleaning glass. It's great for, it doesn't leave any kind of, um, you know, uh, watermarks afterwards, but I personally don't, Ugh, I don't really like the smell of vinegar and neither does Jared. When we started going like chemical free, I started with just vinegar and he hated it. So now that we have the essential oils that we can add into the vinegar, it really cuts down on that vinegar smell. So take a screenshot of this recipe and try it out if you want to make your own glass cleaner. Okay, for your hands, you can either buy, if you are a DIY buyer, if you just are not into DIYing things, you can buy um, a Thieves hand soap, or I even like the lemon hand soap from Young Living. You could just buy your hand soaps right there. They're safe. You can use them on your children. You can even pour half of it out and fill it up with water and stretch it even further in your bottle. So you can pour half of it out into a mason jar, save it for later, and then fill it up with water and it's still gonna work great. So you have your DIY foaming soap that you can make with Castile soap, your choice of different oils that you wanna use, like five to 10 drops. I personally like, the, I like the strong smells. So I, I do about 20 drops. And then fill the rest up with water. Now you want a hand foaming pump that's going to really make it really sudsy and give that, you know, nice lather. Now, if like last year, we had a shortage of hand sanitizer. If you just need some hand sanitizer, you can make your own with aloe vera gel, some vitamin E. You can find that at your, you know, your local Walgreens or CVS. And then you're going to add your thieves, thieves oil in there because it is great for cutting down all the little germies that are on our hands. All right, Kathy, pa passing off to you. All right, so this is really the cleaner. And like I said earlier, the laundry room is where you can really get your biggest, when you're starting to just use your essential oils and you're trying to go chemical free and it feels a little overwhelming, don't let it. You buy one bottle of Thieves Cleaner, all those recipes Lisa just talked about, you've got, it, it cleans everything in your home and it smells so amazing. And then the second room is your laundry room. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of these recipes, but before I do that, I would like to share one little testimony of a fellow oiler, just so y'all know how important this is. So I had one, she's been oiling for a while now. We went through the chemical free. She, um, we're gonna talk about it here in just a minute. Uh, uh, your wool dryer balls can replace your um, dryer sheets because they are loaded with toxins that are carcinogenic. They 
hormone imbalancing, all the things. And she was going through trying to get regulated and she had done everything we thought except for her laundry detergent. Y'all, we have worked on this for about 10 months. We met for a lunch or dinner one night and she said, I can't wait to tell you this. She finally used the laundry detergent. She changed that she had changed everything but the laundry detergent and she regulated immediately after that. And so if that doesn't tell you that it, it, it's harmful in so many ways, but for us women, it truly has a powerful effect on our, effect on our hormones, our regulation, all of those things. So this is one of the great ones. Now I do use, um, uh, Young Living has an amazing concentrated laundry detergent, and I do have several recipes that I, I do use, but I've also create made this one with Lisa before and it works amazing. So these are great recipes. Um, equal parts of the borax, the baking soda and washing soda. You just put equal parts of that. Um, I got, a, I have a large glass container that I mix this in. Um, so it's super easy. You can get those from Michael's or Hobby Lobby, even Walmart, I believe has them. A cup of citric, citric acid and then drops of lemon oil. I'm with Lisa. I probably overdo it, but I love that smell. And that lemon oil is very um, cleaning and just make sure everything is neutralized, all bacteria in there. And then the linen, uh, the laundry spray is four ounce, a four ounce bottle, spray bottle. You can put 10 drops of lavender, just a splash of the witch hazel as a binder and then four ounces of water. Works really good. You just combine it all together and it's a, it's a works really, really well. And then I kind of touched on it with the fabric softener. Um, I cannot encourage you enough with the fabric softener and the dryer sheets. And this works really good. It, you take a gallon of the vinegar bottle, one cup of baking soda, a, one cup of white vinegar, and then 10 to drops of your choice of oil. She has lemon lemongrass shown here because y'all it is so inexpensive and it works so well so it's a really great one it's budget friendly and it does the job and it smells really really good and fresh in your laundry um, um yes kathy did all of that and um oh, let me go back just a second so we put on here the wool dryer balls we this is something that kathy and i stress to y'all every single week throw out those dryer sheets. I was just talking to a friend yesterday. I took her some wool dryer balls and she says, oh, the, the dryer sheets aren't good. And I said, no, ma'am. And her husband even said, oh yeah, they leave a wax film in your dryer, which is a hazard for fire. That's where, you know, most, you know, house fires come from that waxy buildup that, you know, starts a fire. And so throw out those dryer sheets. Dryer sheets also leave a film on your clothes. And remember your skin is a carrier, not a barrier. It does not protect against the things that are coming to it. It carries ingredients into your skin through your derma. And when you take your, your, your clothes and you put them on your skin and that waxy film is on there, your skin is just absorbing it right into your bloodstream. And the, I will tell you, I have a testimony about allergies. We started using essential oils to help support our allergies and they were working great, but it was, we didn't see the dramatic difference until we switched out our laundry detergents and our dryer sheets for non-toxic and for wool dryer balls. Hands down, that's a place you need to start. I cannot stress that enough. Absolutely. And the thing, Lisa, is we wear our clothes, I mean, we wear our clothes all day. Yep. So you're absorbing in your body all day. So it's very important that you kind of research that, like she gave you the resources and check that out because I promise you, um, you will feel so much better. You will just feel better when you change that out too. Yeah. Okay. Fruit and veggie wash. Okay. So a lot of us think, oh, we can just run our, our produce, um, under water and to wash our, our veg fruits and vegetables. Eh, I would not just depend on that. So young living does have a fruit and veggie wash that lasts a long time. I mean, I probably had mine for over a year. I just use a little teeny tiny bit for my little bowl of fruit and, um, you can buy it or you can DIY it. 
Use one fourth cap full of Thieves cleaner, add two drops of lemon oil. You can even do the baking soda and vinegar, you know, equal parts and put it in there and it'll like bubble up. Just leave it in there for a little bit and you are good to go. Okay, carpet freshener. This is a great thing to use. Um, you can do borax, just mix this in a bowl, borax, baking soda, uh, 10 drops of lavender purification, or if you're just, you just have the starter kit, you can do lemon and thieves or citrus fresh and like peppermint. Oh my goodness, that would smell heavenly. And you're just gonna sprinkle that on. Kathy, how long do you leave yours on? Um, I don't, I don't leave it. I mean, you can leave it 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. But the other thing, Lisa, that I will tell you, if you're used to that carpet fresh or whatever, then you're going to try this because this stays in your house. Even after you have, um, vacuumed this fresh scent stays in your house for days. You can go out and come back in and you still get a hint of that because it's not covering. It's not masking it's actually neutralizing the area so what it does is really different but I just throw it on there and leave it on there for about 10-15 minutes and then come back through and vacuum through yeah absolutely awesome I love that you said this goes right into our next slide I love that you said essential oils neutralize smells a lot of us think, oh, I'm gonna do my wall plugins, I'm gonna do my air freshener, I'm gonna do my candles. What you're doing is you're just masking the odor instead of neutralizing the odor. Basically, just think of like, you know, these, like you have a ball of odor and just think of like these little army men coming into the odor and just like exploding it and it just like goes away. <laughs> so that's what essential oils do. So I'm, I left you with some, uh, diffuser blends that you can try. A lot of these are come in the starter kit when you get started. Thieves and lemon. So if you have a smaller diffuser, just do six drops, six to eight drops total. If you have the Aria, which you see here, which is a fan favorite of everyone, I would do about 10 to 12 drops total. So just take, you know, just play around with the ratios of the different blends that I gave you on this graphic. Okay, dish detergent. Now Young Living has a dish detergent that you can't buy. I will tell you actually what I do, okay? I know this is gonna be kind of crazy for some people to you know understand, but I really take my Thieves Cleaner bottle and I leave it on our sink. And we're home all day long and I have trained my kids to take that Thieves Cleaner bottle that we spray the counters with and everything else with. And we will, when they finish their meal, they take their bowl over to the sink, they spray it, they spray the dish with the Thieves Cleaner, they wipe it down, they dry it, or, or they rinse it, they dry it, and they put it away and we're done. <laughs> a lot of people are like, you don't use your dishwasher? No, I haven't used my dishwasher ever. <laughs> but Young Living does have a dish soap if you would uh, you know, like to do uh, wash dishes the traditional way. You can also make your own with one cup of baking soda, one cup of borax, um, a quarter cup of citric acid, and the different, you know, the lemon and the orange. Um, you're gonna put this in a jar and then you're just gonna add a scoop to your, your, um, your tub or your sink and then you're gonna wash your dishes really simply. All right, Kathy, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> toilet cleaner. I, uh, we, there's a couple of options here. This is a really great one. And, and the thing about it is, Lisa, is these recipes are very inexpensive. These products that you, when you collect them, they will last you a long time. So it's not just one time that you're able to use them or use them for a week or two. This this makes a lot when you buy the supplies to do this, you'll have a lot. Um, so they're very budget friendly. And this is one of the toilet cleaners. It's a fourth of Castile soap, two teaspoon, two tablespoons of the baking soda, 10 drops of the tea tree oil, five drops of lemon oil. Lemon oils is lemon oil is a stain lift. So that's why we include it in a lot of cleaning um, recipes that we do because lemon oil is amazing for getting out any kind of hard, hard stain. You fill the rest of that bottle with water and you're good to go. You can also make a little bit of a toilet cleaner with um, using peroxide and baking soda and use these oils. So 
uh, just kind of choose what you have in your home. It, it doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be hard. Um, they, they, both of these recipes work really, really well. And then um, the next one is an oven cleaner. I've used this one. This one works really, really well. Anytime you make a baking soda paste, you can add the thieves cleaner um, in there and it's great. Um, so this one is a one and a half cups of baking soda, a half a cup of the sea salt, half a cup of your washing soda, a half a cup of vinegar, 10 drops of the lemon oil and 10 drops of thieves oil. Um, and I also like Lisa, I, I adjust, but I use my thieves cleaner concentrate. I'll put a cap of anything. If I feel like I'm, if you're, if it's coming up and you feel like you're having a little hard time and it's still got a really hard stain or having a hard time getting it up, just add just a little bit of that concentrated cleaner and it works really, really well on anything in your house. That's the beauty of it. You can use it in anything. So I usually put a cap full of cleaner in this, make a paste and then scrub with it. And then goo remover, again, lemon oil is so good. Get those little price stickers off or any kind of glue label that's come on there um, and you're trying to get it off lemon oil directly. When we own the boutique, I love getting lemon oil because we would post things on the front door for different businesses in town and things like that. And when we would go to remove the, the tape, we would be up there scrubbing for hours trying to get that off. And all we had to do was take lemon oil up there and rub it across and y'all, it would just come right off. So it's amazing. It gets up any kind of sticky, gooey, anything. It's, it's really good. All right, thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. Like I said, we have tons more recipes and tips we're sharing all the time. We're always sharing testimonies. I loved our testimony Tuesday from our friend, our, my niece and my friend um, Aubrey today in our group. She shared about her daughter's diaper rash. Hello. I love testimony Tuesday. We have make it Monday. So anyway, hop on over to the group. We'd love to have you. And if you are somebody who is ready to get started with essential oils, learning all of the oily ways and learning how to ditch out these toxic chemicals that you've had, that you need to untrain yourself. I mean, honestly, that's what it is. is we have not thought any differently than the way we are raised and the way it's been ingrained in us. So we really want to share that with you and just share with you the knowledge that we have learned all these years that we, when our eyes were open to what we were using our home. So if you're ready to get started, you can grab a Young Living Starter Kit. This is not the only way you can get started, but I pretty much, I believe that it's the best way because it comes with 12 essential oils that are like your everyday oils. And we show you exactly how to use them. There's some oils in here right now that are great for seasonal wellness and seasonal support. Um, there's also some that are great if you are uh, sticking with your New Year's resolution by working out. I have been using Panaway almost every single day because I have been working out really hard. And there's just tons of more things in there. You also get a diffuser, which we talked about when you're air freshening the air. All of that is great. Get with the person who shared this class with you. They will help you get started. They will walk with you. They will plug you into all of our educational resources and help you get started. Okay. Bye. For, um, I, <laughs> I'm getting tongue twisted. Uh, we're going to say bye to our Facebook friends and then our girls that are on the live video, we are going to hang out and chat a little bit longer.